Now I have three of these Hewlett Packard 3468 multimeters and I never use them because of this crappy LCD display. Now it's okay when you're looking straight on and in good light like now you can read it but a lot of the time it's just unusable. So I've set about replacing this front panel with something else. We've got this, a nice TFT touchscreen display with graphic capability. We can select the range by touchscreen that was in VDC, bolts AC, amps DC. Uh, there's more down here. We can we can do the test reset, which resets the 8039 processor on the motherboard. Now this is just a prototype, it's still in development. So there's lots of little bugs and missing functionality. But, but, you know, it did a reset and went into volts DC mode. Or we can go to full reset, which resets the processor on this control board. This still isn't pinning down properly. And also resets the motherboard processor. And we can go to another menu. We can turn auto zero on or off. It's by default auto zero is on. I just turned it off. We can say how many digits. We've got five and a half digits there. So let's go to four and a half. Or three and a half. Go back to five and a half digits. Auto manual. That auto range should should have gone out. It's uh, not. It's in manual now. So if we go up. We've moved the digits across and it's now not overranging. So we can go down. Decimal point moved. Do it again. Moved again. And one more time. Yeah, so you can see the touch screen needs need to put a touch screen calibration facility in here for it's a bit off on the low end at the bottom. Back to auto, auto range. So that's what I'm aiming at. The, the idea is this bottom half will have uh, minimum, maximum and average values over a period. And the ability to reset it. I'd also like to put in a, a graph function so we just scroll across and see how a voltage or, or, or some measurement has changed over time and whatever else. You know, there, there could be histograms for and all that sort of stuff that some of the other meters, the, the high-end ones, have. And it's a bit hard to see on the camera. Cause it does look much better in real life than it shows up on the camera. But, uh, yeah, the, the readability at various angles is pretty good. It's, you see a lot of glare there, but it's not quite as bad as it looks. So let's take a look inside of it. Just lift this lid off. Uh, in fact, the, the old display is still connected. Let's turn it on. And you'll see. Oops. So there you can see the display is the same. doesn't fit properly. Uh, this is too low, it's sitting on some chips down there which is not good. The, this LCD, or this whole assembly has to come up three or, three or five millimetres. Now <laughs> I've been working on this thing off and on for over a year. I probably put a few months into it all up but at one stage it was just sitting on my desk for five months right next to me. I didn't do a damn thing but I can't believe in all that time 
Now I didn't realise that there's a fairly serious error in the design, which is not fixed, but I, I know what to do about it, but uh, that hasn't been, hasn't been sorted yet. Just amazed it took me till just a couple of weeks ago to realise that there was this problem. I haven't connected the terminals to the internal wiring. We'll have a look at how I made that and how it was connected to the motherboard. So to the making of it, there's two PCBs. Don't have to be PCBs, but that's what I used. Uh, I've already stuck the decal down on this one, and then there's a, a uh, transparency film on top of that. Very rough, but that all gets covered up. The only thing that's visible will be this USB hole. And then behind that goes this guy, and that thickness, that thickness fits inside this slot on the case, which is about the same thickness as the original front panel, though it does have to be trimmed around the edges. With, with the transparency film, it's too thick, and when I get, remember, of course, this is rough because it's just a prototype, and when I get proper boards made, I might have to make sure there's no solder mask around the edges because that could thicken it up too much to fit in there. Now this back piece has got cutouts here and on the corners because of these little dents and those things in the corner there at the back so it has to be smaller than the front so that goes there and this would go in front and into that plugs this guy LCD and a sort of an Arduino and it just looks through the window and you can operate the touch screen through that uh, this is so these are just a three and a half inch LCDs uh, 320 by 480 pixels and underneath that so it's been intended to plug into an Arduino Uno so this looks like an Arduino Uno but it's not some of the pins are different because the way this is laid out or with, an, with an Arduino Uno uh, the data the 8 bits of data are not all on the same port of the AVR so using an, an Uno you have to do two writes to put data out there one to each port so it happens you can write it to the same thing to both ports but it, it's a bit dodgy but uh, on this I've made it so that the eight data bits to this thing are all on the one port coming out of there. Now this is an AT Mega 1284 which is pretty big AVR uh, it's got 128k of flash and I think it's 16k of RAM I don't know whether I'm probably being pushed for space on the final design so I'll probably end up having to go to using one of the um, SMD chips which are much smaller uh, this regulator which was running off the 7 volts unregulated inside this thing gets pretty hot needs this heat sink I haven't checked the currents and uh, voltages to see how much it's dissipating but there's a possibility that would have to become a switcher otherwise you get too hot once it's inside the case this mess here is uh, simulated pressing of the switches it's just two analog multiplexes and I'm only using half of them because you can't independently select each half so I'm using two of them and only using half of each one uh, I thought I could do it just using the ports on this guy but as it turns out it just didn't work and the signals are crazy what's coming out of there nothing like what a normal scanning matrix looks like and which is what the manual says comes out of it but not, not that I saw and this is the only way I could get it going uh, <clears throat> then to connect to this original unit there's the original display still though I broke it unplugging it they're very delicate little pins on those things and I broke some so I ended up making this business to replace it and it's a bit stronger anyway now under here 
bit of a bodge. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't try and join it to any of the existing, say for the keypad here. I didn't try and join it to those or to this thing. I wanted to be completely independent, so so I could always revert. And so it's just dabbing onto a few places for uh, to pick up signals. So four there, a couple there, four there, four there, and two for the power back here. Again, this is only a prototype, so I'm learning the right way to do it and the wrong way. This is the wrong way. Of course, all these wires should be coming out on this side instead of like that, and therefore this thing should have, these connectors should be over this side as well. And so instead of these sort of connectors, which have to be hand done, and the thicker wire that I've used there, which is overkill, I'll use these pre-made JST connectors. These are 200 millimeters long, but for some they'll need to be 300 millimeters, which you can get. And then the, these connectors just live on the board, you know, like that. That'll be fairly easy, and they'll they're a bit tight, sticking down around here, so the thinner wires will be a help there. Now the, the power switch which was operated via this which operates that switch back there, this push rod and I'm getting rid of that for a few reasons and just using a mini toggle switch which will go here. This switch only disconnected power, uh, disconnected the secondary from the power supply. The uh, transformer was always energised on its primary whenever there was something power plugged into there. And because of that serious error that I mentioned before, I'm going to use this as the power switch and it will be controlling the mains into that transformer. So I'll have to put some jumpers into this business down here. And another reason for getting rid of it is the push rod sits right over this ROM and I want to uh, remove that, read it out, put a socket in because these things are are prone to losing their contents. Now there's two sorts, this is a 28 pin one and it, it may be a direct replacement by a one of the 27 series, it's uh, what is it, uh, I think 4K, so what's that, a 2764, 2732, not sure off the top of my head, um, but yeah it may have a different pin out and there may have to be some funny buggers to do selecting going on so it might need a little adapter board and there's just not enough room even for a socket really for this one and one of the three that I've got has the 24 pin version of the ROM which I'm pretty sure will need some sort of a funny adapter and possibly some selection logic on it and there'll certainly be no room for it for the push rod when I, on that one so I'm just getting rid of these things. The terminals we could use safety terminals like these, but I like the old school binding posts, so I'm going to use those guys, so they'll, they'll be sticking out here. So I'll start putting this back together and show you uh, how it fits in. And there it is, roughly assembled. Yeah, so this this connection here is just for the, to power this mess down here. Now, no doubt I'll have to be going in here opening this up again so I haven't done anything about the USB connector in fact I haven't put the hole in the back back plate yet but so the USB was or does run out of there just for development but I've got to find some way of mounting this there, putting a hole in, in this plate of course, and then having a JST run from that to the board. So getting rid of that connector. So yeah, six way JST cable going from there to the control board. One other thing, the current terminal with the current range the amps has a built in fuse holder thing which I cannot reproduce and it mates to this part down here on the motherboard so I'll be 
replacing it with an inline fuse like this <coughs> that will just hang off the current terminal with a spade connect, uh, a ring connector there just one of these on there oh, one that fits that is <laughs> uh, yeah I've got, to, I've got to drill those out so they fit but yeah I'll just go to that and then and, and this will go to the original current connector which I think is this one and for the other terminals, the other four, again one of these ring lugs and it just so happens that they can act as spades to these connectors with a bit of persuasion. So that's how I'll connect the original connectors to these new terminals. Alright, I'll get that thing into here. So there it is. Uh, it doesn't quite sit properly. It came with some persuasion. I'll have to work on that. But uh, this board here is sailing very close to the wind. It's sitting on some chips down there. So in the next version, this LCD has to come up three to five millimeters to give good clearance down there. Um, yeah, it, it, something's holding it back. I'm not sure what just yet, but. It can sit in that hole better than it, it's doing there. And so there's my progress so far on this project. I mainly made this video to link it to a post that I want to put on the EEV blog forum to see if anyone's got any ideas, suggestions, comments. Probably half of them will say it's a waste of time, but oh well. <laughs> anyway, catch you later.